Hi everyone, it's Rachel and in this video I'm going to be testing some different gloss glazes that people typically use on polymer clay. This is a little experiment that I actually ended up running over one year to ultimately see which glaze is the best to use on polymer clay charms. By the way, I just checked the script that I wrote for this video a year ago on April 1st. Yes, I write scripts, don't judge me. And apparently this experiment was only meant to go for six months. Oops. Well, here we are a whole year later. I currently use UV resin on my charms to make them nice and shiny and also add extra strength, but I do get a lot of comments from people asking if they can use other things like Mod Podge or nail polish or just other glazes in general. So that's what I'm going to be testing in this video today and I don't know what that hair flick was. <laughs> Some of these things I have not recommended to people in the past just because, I don't know, for various reasons. Okay, pause there for just a second. I forgot to actually mention that I started filming this video on April 1st, 2020. Here's a screenshot I took from that day. And I ended the experiment on April 4th, 2021. I do mention this later in the video, but I thought it probably was something that I should also include in the intro. Thank you for listening and continue on. But if you keep watching this video, you will see all the results and you can see which glaze works the best. So for each type of glaze, I've created three little sample pieces of polymer clay, one white, one pink, and one black, just to see how they react on different colors of clay. I've also added a little code onto the end so I can tell which glaze has been put on which clay. Our first victim is going to be Mod Podge. Now this comes in lots of different types, but the one I have here is the gloss type, as that's the kind of effect that we're going for. Mod Podge is a water-based sealer, glue, and finish that dries quickly and can be used for lots of different crafts, but can it be used as a good quality polymer clay glaze? So here I'm just using a regular brush and I'm applying the Mod Podge onto each of the clay samples, starting off with the white piece, then the pink, and also the black. Here you'll notice that it does apply very milky white, particularly on the darker colors, but it does dry clear. I'm also going to only apply one coat as I am with the other glazes to keep the results consistent as well. I then allowed it to dry and here you can see it is a little streaky with just one coat and it is also quite thin, but it's time to put it away into my cupboard for a year to see how it holds up. The next one I'm going to be testing is the clear nail polish. Now this is usually a big no-go area because the chemicals in nail polish over time actually dissolve the polymer clay and it kind of goes very dull and sticky. Personally, I haven't glazed any of my charms with nail polish before, but from various clay blog posts, you can see that it's definitely one to avoid. The brand I'm using here is Revlon, and that's because I wanted to use one of the better brands of nail polish rather than just a cheap kind of home brand one. Here's what it looks like once it's dry, and honestly, it doesn't even look too bad at the moment, but we'll check again in a year. Next up, I'm going to be using the Sculpey Gloss Glaze. Now, this glaze is obviously made by the clay brand Sculpey, and this was one of the very first glazes that I used on my charms. However, when I went to use it, I found that the liquid that I did have left in the bottle had completely dried up and gone hard. So hopefully you can forgive me for that, but I will show you some charms in the results part of the video that I did glaze with Sculpey Gloss Glaze way back in the day. Now we have a brand called Triple Thick, and this is actually the glaze that I moved on to using after the Sculpey Gloss Glaze. Triple Thick, as its name suggests, is a very thick gloss glaze, and you only need one coat of it. If you do apply more than one coat, it actually cracks and can go a little bit funky. So here you can see just how thick it actually is when I pour it out onto my little bit of baking paper. Again, I'm just using a regular brush and brushing on one coat onto each of the samples before I allow them to dry. This glaze does give each of the samples a nice glossy shine, but we'll see how it holds up for a whole entire year. Next up, this is what we call polyurethane, and again, this is the glaze that I transitioned to after I was kind of finished with the triple thick. This is what it looks like. It's a very milky kind of liquid. I just store it in this jar, but then, of course, I also have the original tin that it came in. The brand that I have here is called Cabot's, and it's the Cabothane Clear version, which is glossy, but you can also get it in a satin or matte finish as well. I'm pretty sure this brand is only in Australia, but I do know that you can get very similar things in other countries as well. So here I'm applying one layer onto each of the samples and then allowing them to dry. It gave the clay a fairly nice shine, but it does seem quite thin because usually you would need to build it up with a few layers. The final type of glaze that I'm going to be testing today is the one that I currently use on my polymer clay charms, and that is clear UV resin. So resin is a whole nother craft in itself, and there's a few different types you can get, but typically it doesn't bother me which one I use. Here you can see that I have a thin type one and also one for molds, and I would happily use either to glaze my charms. The other thing you need for UV resin is a UV light or lamp, or you could also use the sun, of course. I typically pour some of my resin onto a little sheet of baking paper, and then I just use a regular 
regular paintbrush to brush it on in one coat. Then of course to harden or cure the resin you need to use a UV light or also place it out into the sun on a sunny day which is what I would usually do with my charms. You'll notice that with the samples particularly on the pink one and also the little spot on the black piece that the resin has kind of pulled away from the edges and that sometimes does happen. I've found that if you don't place it under a light to cure straight away it can pull away from the edges if the whole charm is not glazed completely over. That was kind of my fault though because in this video I was focusing more on the filming rather than the curing process but usually when I'm making my charms I will be more focused on them of course. So then it was time to wait. I placed all of these samples into my cupboard and then didn't touch them for an entire year. They were all glazed on April 1st, 2020, and then we made our long journey around the sun, living through a pandemic and multiple lockdowns. But here we are today on April 4th, 2021. So let's have a little look at the results and see how the different glazes held up. So up first we have the Gloss Mod Podge. Here are the three sample pieces. I realised that it is quite difficult to see on the white and the pink clay, so I'm focusing mainly on the black clay sample. It still has the same streakiness about it and you can clearly see the brush strokes. And here it is side by side with the 2020 footage. And despite that awful streaky look I keep going on about, I do feel like it did actually maintain its shine, which I'm quite surprised about. I then also remember reading online how about ugh, about how if water touches it, the glaze can turn white. So I thought I would decide to try it out. And don't mind that huge scrape on it. All will be explained later on. Here I'm adding a small droplet of water and leaving it for a while to do its thing. After about 10 minutes, this is what it looks like. It definitely has a whiteness about it. And it's clear to see a ring around the outside where the droplet of water was sitting. So overall, the pros are that it does keep its shine if it's not used or touched, maybe for a display piece, and it is affordable for the amount that you get. The cons, of course, are the streaks, how thin it is, and that at the end of the day, it's not the highest performing clay glaze because it is just a glossy PVA craft glue and it's not designed for glazing clay. Next, we are going to have a look at our nail polish, and as predicted, it has started eating into the clay. This is the most obvious on the black sample with the white large patch, but it has also done the same thing on the white and pink. It's just harder to see on camera. Lots of beginners particularly, and just people inexperienced with clay, seem to use nail polish on polymer clay because it's easily accessible, and most people have it in their house already. I do see the appeal of this, and honestly, if I had never taken the time to do the research, I probably would have done the same too. The trouble with clear nail polish is that the chemicals eat and dissolve the clay and over time this causes stickiness. It's also not designed to be a long lasting glaze and if applied on clay jewelry for example it will wear away and peel off quite quickly. So for the nail polish I'm not giving it any pros because I don't think it deserves any. Then of course there are the cons which I have already mentioned. Overall nail polish just needs to be avoided when glazing or sealing polymer clay. Our next glaze is the Sculpey Gloss Glaze, which I couldn't actually test because it had dried up. Yeah, great job. But here are some pieces that I did glaze when I first started making polymer clay charms. Most of the charms in my first ever charm box were actually glazed with Sculpey Gloss Glaze because that's what I was using at the time. I did eventually stop using it though because I noticed my charms were quickly losing their shine and starting to feel tacky just sitting in the box. So I guess one pro would be that a lot of beginners use it because it's easy to use and it's quite accessible with other Sculpey products. The cons are that it doesn't stay glossy for very long, it feels sticky and from the other sources and reviews that I've read, it does begin to peel if the layers are applied too thick. Now we have Triple Thick, which is the next glaze that I used on my charms after Sculpey Gloss Glaze. This one still has a little bit of shine about it after a year of sitting in the cupboard, but you can see that in comparison to the 2020 footage that it has turned a little dull. The main reason that I personally stopped using Triple Thick on my charms is that like the Sculpey Gloss Glaze, my charms just started to feel sticky and on a few charms that I had hanging on my bag and pencil case at school, the Triple Thick very quickly started to wear thin and peel off. So this is the Toothless charm that I made in 2014, which has turned very cloudy over time. I remember when I first made it, he was super shiny and glossy, which you can kind of see in this old charm update that I have up on YouTube. Here's also a narwhal charm, which I added two layers of glaze to, and now it has lots of cracks in it. Overall, Triple Thick is very thick and glossy in just one coat, which does save time. However, it will eventually turn cloudy, sticky, and form cracks in it if more than one a layer, a layer is applied. So after using Triple Thick on my charms for about a year, I decided to move on to 
polyurethane varnish after researching it online. This is how it looks after a year in comparison to the 2020 version. I think it held onto its shine all right and it doesn't feel sticky at all. You can find polyurethane in hardware stores because it is designed to be a durable finish for timber surfaces. I used polyurethane for quite a few years on my charms, however stopped because of the time that it takes to build up the layers so that it's nice and thick. Plus, even after a longer amount of time, the clay was still going slightly cloudy as you can tell on this kawaii bat charm. So here are the pros and cons of polyurethane. Of course, other brands may differ slightly, but this is the experience that I've had with the Cabot's brand that we have here in Australia. Lastly, we have the UV resin and oop, the bottle changed. Great job. As you can see, it still looks super shiny when the light hits it. It's just that really small section that pulled away from the edges that's kind of bugging me. This one looks exactly the same as it did a year ago in the side-by-side -side comparison. It also didn't go sticky at all and it still feels really nice and smooth. I've personally been using UV resin to glaze my charms now since 2017 when I made the switch from polyurethane. This little radio charm was one of the very first pieces that I ever glazed with UV resin just as a little experiment to see how I liked it and it is still super shiny and smooth. Here is a more recent charm that I have also glazed with UV resin and you can easily see on the black clay just how shiny it is in one coat. Sometimes I find if I don't give it any exposure to UV light straight away it can pull away from itself just on certain brands and colors and I don't know why that is. So if that does ever happen I just add another layer and we are good to go. Here are the UV resin pros and cons. It can be quite pricey, especially if you're just starting out with polymer clay and you don't want to invest in too many expensive supplies. Plus, there's also the cost of the UV light, which you need if you want to glaze at night or on a cloudy or really rainy day. And then, of course, I couldn't just stop there. I decided that I wanted to test out how each of the glazes would actually hold up if they were being used rather than just sitting in a dark cupboard for 12 months. Now, young 2020 Rachel wasn't very clever and didn't think of this. So I'm improvising here and I'm going to see just how easily each coat of glaze scratches off with a blade, which is clearly in great form. I understand that scraping the glaze aggressively with a sharp blade is different to normal wear and tear, but unfortunately I didn't think to test this as a part of an experiment a year ago. First up, we have the Mod Podge sample and unsurprisingly, with just a few gentle scrapes of my blade, it started to peel right off and it wasn't very strong at all. I mean, it is just a PVA glue. So I'm going to be giving it a strength score of 1 out of 10. <laughs> Then we have the triple thick glaze. I found that this one was quite easy to dent and leave little gouges in, but to scrape the actual glaze off the surface was a little more difficult. I would like to give it a much higher score for strength, but unfortunately those little indents are just going to bring down the score because no one wants them in their clay charms. 3 out of 10. Next up is the nail polish sample. Now, surprisingly, I did find it quite difficult to scrape off where the surface was still shiny. However, in the cloudy patch where the clay did start to dissolve, it came right off with just a few scrapes. So I'm giving it a 1 out of 10. Moving on to the polyurethane, I actually had quite high hopes for this one, but I found with just the third scrape of my blade, it started to come up. And then after that, it almost was able to be like kind of shaved off. I know that on a normal clay charm, you do need to build up the coats to get some thickness, but based off this particular result, I'm giving it a 1 out of 10. Finally, we have the UV resin, and I knew for this one that I would have to use my muscles, and I was right. I was really scraping the blade quite hard for this one, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get the UV resin to scrape off like the other glazers did. Because I was pushing so hard, though, I did end up putting some scratches in it, but in terms of wearing off, I couldn't get it to budge. I'm going to be giving this one an 8 out of 10. No, a 9 out of 10. How about an 8.5? Perfect. So there you go. That was my little glaze experiment that I ended up running for just over a year. Of course, everyone has different experiences with different types of glazes on different types of clay. So if your favorite brand or type of glaze in this video didn't turn out as well as you thought, Try not to stress over it. Unless, of course, it's nail polish. Stop using nail polish. If you did find this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for lots more crafty videos. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.